Hi students, this chapter we are going to look at chemical changes and chemical reactions. So chemical reactions occur at molecular level, means at the atoms, atoms level, bonds are broken and form again. Okay, so to break the bonds, what do we need? We need energy. And energy usually is supplied to for reaction to take place. So this energy is usually in the form of heat, light, and electricity. Okay, and for chemical reactions to take place, it is always true that new substances are formed. And because they form new substances, it cannot be reversed easily. So some of the schools may test us the difference between physical change and a chemical change. The most important thing is new substances are formed. And because these substances are new, they have their own properties, which is different from the original reactants. Okay. For physical change, there's no new substance form, and then these properties remain the same when there's a physical change in state. Okay, so for example, what's a physical change? Like if I squeeze the plasticine, right? The plasticine properties, it is still remains the same. It doesn't change. Okay, and then for chemical reactions, there's usually energy involved. Again, this energy, we are talking about heat, electricity, and light. And then usually for physical change, there's no energy change except a change in state. So except a change in state, what do we mean? So for example, if I boil water, H2O, water is H2O, right? And it is in liquid state. If I boil it, I definitely need to supply energy, right? But when you boil your water, it becomes H2O, water, vapor that's in gas state. So H2O is still H2O. Right, so even though there's energy supplied, there's nothing new form because H2O is still H2O. So this is a physical change. Okay, and then a change could be temporary, so it can be reversed easily. Right, so same thing in the analogy. If I use boiling as an example, water vapor, I can condense it back and it will form the liquid. Right, so this is a change in state and it is reversed easily. Okay, but for chemical change, the change is usually a permanent change and it cannot be reversed easily. So in an example of a chemical reaction, for example, we have uh, hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas is going to form water. Okay, if you learn about balancing equation, then we have to balance the oxygen atoms by putting a 2 in front. This is two molecules of water. And when you put two molecules of water, then you will have four hydrogen atoms in total. So this part, you also have to put two in front to get your four hydrogen atoms. So once this reaction happens and water is formed, right? It doesn't mean that if I go and heat the water, heat, 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 I supply heat to it, then it can change back, right? It is not so easy to reverse the reaction back into hydrogen and oxygen gas. And this is a chemical change. Okay, most of the time we will make some observations in chemical change, not so much the physical. Okay, so when we see there's a change in color, most of the time we can conclude that it is a chemical change. So the change in color must be permanent. Okay, if you see a change in color, what we should do is to do further tests to show that new substances are formed. Okay, so sometimes, right, for an example, yeah, I can have a white powder. Okay, so this white powder is copper to sulfate, one of the chemical reactants that we always use. Okay, and this white powder is dry. So when I add water to the, to the powder, the, the powder okay, will turn blue. So there is a change in color, but this change in color is physical. How you know it's physical? This because right there is no new substance is formed. It is just a hydrated or a wet powder. The blue powder is just a hydrated or a wet powder. And I can heat the blue powder. It will turn white. Why? Because when you heat it, it removes the water content. OK, 
Okay, so when you remove the water content, it is not a physical, uh, sorry, it's not a chemical reaction, it's just physically removing the water. Okay, most of the time, if there is a solid form, right, and then in upper sec, right, we will learn it as a precipitate. Okay, so most of the time, if, the, if you mix some reagents together and it turns cloudy, we don't say it's cloudy anymore, we will say it's a precipitate, and then we just identify what is the color of your precipitate. Okay, most of the time, if you form a gas, gas is something new in the reaction. So when you see effervescence, this is scientific word for bubbling, when you see bubbles form, when you have a smell, when you see fumes, smoke, right, a chemical reaction has taken place. And then there is a transfer of energy. Energy is usually supplied. Okay, and then how you know you touch the test tube, you may feel a little bit cold, a little bit hot, you know, there may be a slight explosion, there may be a fire, etc. Okay, so for chemical reactions to take place, heat energy is usually involved. Okay, so for heat energy that's involved, we have two terms to describe it. Okay, the first one is endothermic and the second one is exothermic. So exo come from the word exoskeleton, you know, exoskeleton is like an outside skeleton. So thermic comes from the word thermal. So out energy, okay, or giving out heat energy. Okay, so energy is given out to the surrounding for your exothermic. Okay, so processes which are exothermic, these processes are physical change, but they are exothermic. Okay, so in an example, freezing. What is happening during freezing? So freezing is when your water, which is at 25 degrees C, right, turns into ice, which is at 0 degrees C. So what happens when water is a liquid, it's sliding in layer, okay? And then when it turns into ice, it starts to vibrate about fixed position. So from slide, it starts to vibrate the particles, right? So you can see that it is going slower. So why did it become slower? It's because the energy is lost. Lost to where? Lost to surrounding. So this one where you freeze, this is a exothermic reaction because the energy is given out to the surrounding okay and the reverse side you have endothermic and endothermic is when the energy is taken in or absorbed from the surrounding okay so processes like melting so using the back the same example you have ice which is zero degrees turns into water which is 25 degrees Right, so now from vibrating in fixed position, they start to slide. So they are moving faster and faster. They gain the energy so they can move faster. Right, so what happens? Energy is taken in and they start to move faster.